Hello, I'm Dean Bertram, and welcome to my weird library. One of the things I love most about books is they often give you a window into the specific time period that they were written or published. And in the UFO field, there's one book which really captures its time, and that's The Humanoids, which was edited by Charles Bower. Now, the book is an anthology of writings from a number of different ufologists, many of the leading ufologists of the day. The book came out in 1969, or that's when it was published as a book. It actually came out previously in a couple of different printings as a special edition of the major UFO magazine of the day, Flying Saucer Review. It appeared first, I believe, in 1966, and then I think there was a second printing in 68, and then the hardcover of the book came out in 69. Why is that period so significant? Well, 1966 was the year that, via congressional pressure, the Air Force had handed over the study of UFOs, of flying saucers, to the University of Colorado under the head of the one of the leading physicists of the day, Edward Condon. This study was put together to supposedly once and for all determine whether the Air Force had any business worrying about the flying saucer phenomenon. And from early on, leading ufologists began to become concerned with the way that the Condon Committee, as it was called, seemed to be approaching the UFO phenomenon. This all totally blew up when a memo was leaked called the Low Memo, which had a senior staffer writing an internal memo, essentially saying that the trick for the Condon Committee, the University of Colorado UFO study, would be to present to the public as if they were doing a totally objective analysis of the UFO phenomenon, while kind of nod, nod, wink, winking to the, their colleagues in the international scientific establishment that they had zero expectation of actually discovering anything real behind the UFO phenomenon. And when that memo was leaked, I believe it initially went to uh, James McDonald, one of the leading ufologists of the day, and spread out from there. Pretty much the entire UFO community turned its back on the Condon Committee and understood what the bias meant and what the final report was going to be. And essentially, they were right. The report, although there are some interesting cases within, for the most part, when that was published in 1969, it pretty much said there's nothing here which is of concern or of need for the US Air Force to continue studying. So when that initial flying saucer review edition of the humanoids came out, there was already that suspicion growing. And certainly by the time the book was published in 69, Charles Bowen, the editor, made a point of saying at the beginning that the Condon Committee is about to release its report, as you know, as I'm literally penning this introduction, and we know about the low memo, and we know what this report's essentially going to say. Within the collection of ufologists here, as I said, some of the main heavy hitters of the day, including Coral Lorenzen, including Jacques Vallée, including Amy Michelle, including Charles Bowen himself, including Gordon Crichton, and their writings are absolutely phenomenal. Like to, you, you wouldn't get a book like this, I don't think, published today. It's when the mystery was still fresh. Of course, 69, we we're only we're less than a quarter of a century into the modern UFO phenomenon, and there's still this idea that there's a mystery to be solved. These people haven't come to any firm conclusions yet. And it's so interesting to think that there was that period long before the kind of crazy contamination which grew even more after the Condon Committee, where you get more and more tales of massive alien abduction scenarios and secret government bases and all of these type of things that I like to call X-Files ufology, because everybody understands with that conspiracy type view of of UFOs and the relationship with the US government actually looks like, at least fictionally. But in these early days, sure, people didn't trust necessarily the government and how the Air Force was dealing with it. And people, or at least some ufologists, were starting to seriously talk about contact reports, which are certainly, as this book suggests, titled The Humanoids. 
um, is obviously putting front and centre. But the type of cases in here were the very early cases, like the Socorro, New Mexico landing seen by Sheriff's Deputy Lonnie Zamora, which is a classic of the field, the Villa Boas abduction, um, predating the Hills abduction. All of these early encounter cases and a wonderful catalogue of the 1954 flat by Jacques Vallée, mainly looking at European, particularly French, humanoid accounts. It, it was before there was this solidification of what we expect the UFO phenomenon to be. In other words, little grey man getting out of flying saucers from Zeta Reticula who have this ongoing conspiracy with the US government who know exactly what the ETs are up to and have crash saucers parked in Area 51. It was a very different day. And even Bowen in the introduction talks about how readers will notice this incredible difference in a lot of the humanoid reports. There wasn't then yet this cultural standard of the little grey man. And I think it shows that there was this period in the study of UFOs where there was this incredible promise, perhaps of us learning something from the mystery, perhaps of us really getting something right. And after the Condon Committee, for various reasons, and it's not entirely the fault of that committee, but ufology went down more and more paranoid paths and more and more extra extravagant tales. Not that there were beforehand, because there were, of course, the contactees of the 1950s and 60s, people like George Adamski, who supposedly were in contact with benevolent space brothers, and they had a very extensive cosmology of what all of this was about, but it hadn't been adopted whole cloth by all of ufology yet. There wasn't that one major myth, which included Roswell and abductions and Area 51 and the like. And so when you look back at this unique time in the history of UFOs, you realize that it wasn't always the same as it is today. The current beliefs weren't what the beliefs always were. What was front and center in the minds of people interested in UFOs wasn't what's necessarily front and center in our minds today. And I'm not sure if we've come any closer in fact, I think we've come no closer to the mystery. At least then we seem to consider it still a mystery. And I think I'll finish this little chat about the humanoids by reading the great uh, French ufologist Amy Michel's very closing words. He's the last article in this book, and this is the last sentence in the last article in the book. And I think if we paid attention to this type of approach, we might have somehow learnt more about UFOs and doing so learnt more about ourselves. All speculation about the UFO phenomenon has but one single useful goal. To teach us to rid ourselves of all ideas, conscious or subconscious, in order to look only at the facts and the facts alone. The rest is useless child's play. Thank you for listening to me chat about the humanoids today. I really enjoyed it, as I always do. Please like this episode. If you did, like it, subscribe to the channel. And just be conscious that, as I mentioned last week, there won't be many more episodes of My Weird Library. It will be transforming into a bigger show where I'll have a co-host. We'll still be talking about books, but it will be going for an hour plus probably instead of the 10 to 15 minutes which I've been doing so far and it will be moving to another channel but I will make sure all those details are here and can point anybody who comes later to this channel into finding the new show which I'm looking incredibly forward to. Anyway until I get to chat to you again thank you for listening and keep it weird. <laughs>